Hey everyone, this is Andrew, and in this video we're going to continue our adventure into the world of contact instruments. Again, just to reiter reiterate, reiterate, wow, um, I'm using Contact 6 just because it's the new thing, it's the hottest out right now, I'm sure a lot of people don't have it yet, but basically almost everything I'm doing in this video applies to Contact 5 as well, and probably even older editions of Contact. So. Depending on what you have, everything in this video will work, or it might be a little bit different, but it should be 99% the same. In the previous video, we mapped some samples, we set some loops for the samples so that they can play forever, we added a filter, and we added delay. And I mentioned that you can do things like assign velocity-dependent samples. Right now, we only have key-dependent samples. All the velocity sound is coming from the volume, so depending on how hard I hit the note will control how loud the sample plays. But we can also do something, like if you grab all these samples and you grab, whoops, grab these samples and you grab the bottom of the highlighted one, <laughs> you can drag them up to a certain volume. And you can tell what volume you're at by looking up here in the velocity. If you click any sample, it'll tell you the key range. Like for this, it's F sharp two to F sharp two. Velocity is 64 to 127, and its root is F sharp 2. You can also control the volume pan tuning of that sample. But if I open up the uh, place where I had samples before, I grab the loud samples, but I do also have soft samples. So I can highlight all of these sounds, drag them right in underneath what I had before, and drop them. It's going to take a second to actually load the samples. There we go, I thought my computer might crash for a sec. Now what you can do, I'm gonna highlight them all this way. I'm gonna drag, oh, sometimes it's tricky with these small samples. If you ever find it's too hard to drag something because it's so small, just click the plus button and it'll, it'll zoom in. Um, but I managed to grab it, so I'll zoom out. Drag it, you can have some crossfade or you can make it so that they stop exactly at each other. So this goes from one to 63. And this goes from 64 to 127. So now, just to make it obvious, I'm going to get my velocity control and make it zero. So every time I hit a sound, it's going to be the exact same volume, no matter what the velocity is. You wouldn't want to do this in an instrument, probably, but just to demonstrate the two different sounds more easily. So I'm going to hit soft and then loud. Here I have these two different sounds. And you can hear it's a subtle difference in this case, but if you had completely different sounding samples, it'd, it'd be more obvious. Put this uh, velocity envelope to what I had it before, about 50%. Now if I want to make this real obvious, what I can do is I can uh, tune this sample up. So this sample is drastically out of tune, but the soft ones aren't. So you hear that when I hit velocity in that range, it's tuned up that much. I'm hitting the same note. So that's that's one way to illustrate it, but just so you don't think I'm lying about this <laughs> being the velocity dependent. I thought these samples would have been a little more different, but anyways, that's how you can map different velocity sounds. All right, sorry, my computer crashed for a sec there. But anyway, so we just mapped some samples for loud and quiet. You can go into your heart's content and map a, a different note for every key and a different sample for every single velocity. So you can really get in depth here. And make a really stunning, realistic instrument. Now, another thing I'll cover in this video while we're on the topic of vel uh, velocity-dependent modulators, you can actually look at something like your filter and assign an external velocity sound. So what this is going to do is it's going to modulate the filter depending on how hard you hit the key. So if I put this down, this is all the way up. I'll make it a little less intense. So depending on how hard I hit, depends how intense that cutoff is.
And you'll notice that as I do that, that it's kind of, uh, it does it on a note by note basis. So if I hit this really soft, and this one really loud, and then this one really soft again, it's the filter changes position, but the notes that were different are still different. So um, it's, it's note by note basis. And you can also go ahead and do this for something like after touch. I think I want mono. And it's the same deal. So just a little tidbit. If you want to delete that, just highlight it, click delete. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know. Just off the bat with that little level of detail, mapping samples across velocity controlled notes and setting a um, velocity controlled filter, uh, you can make a very detailed instrument. So anyways, at the risk of making this video as incredibly long as the last one, I'm gonna leave that here, keep this video nice and tight. So as a summary, we mapped some samples. So now we have a dual velocity sample instrument and we also have a variable velocity filter instrument. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe for more. I upload videos every Friday or Saturday, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.